So uh, this is the Capital Improvement Planning Committee, Deerfield, Massachusetts uh, meeting for uh, uh, February 17th, 2021. And we're calling the meeting to order at uh, 543. And the members present are Jack Davey, Mark Brennan, Carolyn Ness, and Jeff Upton. Okay. So the, fir the first thing on the agenda was to uh, choose officers. And I was gonna ask if there were any nominations or volunteers. <laughs> Can I shrink? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I think you have enough to do. I might, uh, I, know. I, I, I don't know if I would vote for you. You're, you're. I can't, I can't do one more thing. Yeah, right. As a matter I'm... of fact, I, I probably shouldn't, I, after about an hour, I got to get on the phone because we canceled our vaccine clinics uh, for Thursday and Friday this week and rescheduling them for Sunday and Monday. So I have to restaff them. I got to make about 50 phone calls to my volunteers. So, we have no I, vaccine. so I, I guess I would, since I was co-chair last year, I, I would, if you guys want me to, I would. Uh, I nominate Dave. John. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm going to nominate Jack for uh, chairman of the Capital Improvement Committee. Do I? Do I, I, do I, it? I second it right away. Okay. All right. All in favor? Jack Davey, aye. Jeff, Carolyn, aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you, Jack. I'm right. so thankful you did that. All right, so now we, we do need a secretary because I really don't want to have to continue to do the, the minutes. Um, although, Casey, what you sent me a text and you said that the governor requires the minutes to be posted within 24 hours of the meeting. It, what, they actually require either the recording or some sort of draft minutes to be posted within 24 hours, yeah. So does that mean we don't really have to do written minutes or you can just post? What the... we do is we put the we put the recording up, but eventually written minutes have to be produced because that's the require. So there's two things here. The governor's order relates to the COVID response um, about posting some form of um, recording of what, what was discussed for committees. Um, the re regular public records and open meeting law require that a that eventually minutes have to be approved. Okay. So they're public record. Now, what could happen is, is, and I said this last night in the finance committee meeting, um, we post the recordings most of the time, except for when we've had technical difficulties or if it was something that we you know, truly could not take. And those happened at the beginning of COVID. Um, what we did was we'd post the, the meetings and then somebody could go back and and transcribe that based on the recording. Right. And often that's what we do in our office. Okay, so- I think it might be useful to have a clerk, but it a lot of people are really pressed for time, Jack, so I get it. Um, well, all right, so we'll, well, we'll, I guess we'll just move on. We'll move on from that and uh, Jack, do you want to just wait till uh, next meeting where we can get uh, the other participants involved? Yeah, and, yeah, and I'll just example. I'll just do it quickly, you know, for this meeting. And, okay. Uh, you know, then we'll we'll see if we we can get another volunteer or. Uh, um, we might be able to. We might be able to. It's not that onerous. Yeah, it's not, and I, you know, it it's pretty. You know, I, I don't know. I, I guess I kind of went overboard with the minutes, uh, you know, uh, in the past. But it doesn't really have to be that that voluminous, especially when there's a, a recording. So, but I, I why don't we do that? We'll just wait and, and until we have uh, more members. So um, I I, I was going to suggest that for night for tonight that we um, limit the meeting to couple hours and but Carolyn you say you have to be gone in like an hour so we're gonna well I I, I hate to call people after nine o'clock but I I need fine. to make sure people, no one is showing up tomorrow for 8 30. 
Well, that's fine. And I don't know how far into this we want to get without uh, three, without three other, other members, you know? Uh, so. Yeah, but we could just organize it and go through, you know. So, uh, know. so last year, one of the things we did last year is we, we investigated and discussed um, all of their requests. And then we took a vote. We took one vote at the end. And I thought that, that that worked pretty well. So we had one meeting where we took all the votes. What do you, what do you guys think? You wanna do that again or? I, I thought it was really effective myself, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and it also let things shake out over right. the whole um, process rather than have to go back and revote stuff. So I felt it was more comfortable because it felt like it was revol evolving through the whole right. budget season. Right. And so we had, you had, a, the finance committee was working and then you had, you know, us select board at least being informed. And then, um, you know, this group was working together. So, um, you know, you felt like you had some balance and, and some idea of what really we could afford and what could be bumped off. And um, I, I think also through once you keep talking about stuff and then you can shift shift things. And, you know, if it's two years down the road or three years down the road, you can, you have a little bit of wiggle room, you know, that's all. I mean, that's just my opinion. Okay, Jeff, what do you think? I, I agree. I, I think that worked well for us. It gave us time to really vet uh, the request and if we had to go back to revisit, we could. Right. So I, I felt that it was pretty effective doing it that method. And uh, I myself, I think we should probably continue with that. And uh, Jeff? Or, or, or I mean, uh, Mark, I'm sorry, Mark. <laughs> Yeah, that sounds good. I, I, I certainly do want to investigate a lot of these items um, more, so right. I would agree. Okay. Okay, so um, I, the, the, it, it turned out, as it turned out, there, there are actually 21 requests, and um, which is more than I've ever seen since I've been on this committee. And, but, I, but my understanding is that a lot of them really are placeholders. They're not requests for this year. So I think part of our task is gonna be to kind of figure out which or determine which ones are actually requests for this year and which ones are requests for, um, for the future. Um, so, um, Jack, question. Yes, go ahead. Jeff, I'm just wondering, and, and I agree with you 100%. Uh, for tonight, I'm just I'm just wondering if we could possibly just take the FY22 capital projects plan and kind of walk down through there and see. Uh, items, requests that are immediate, mm -hmm. and we don't have to really even discuss them, just say that, are they 22 okay. or not? That's and, a good idea. And then we, so that we, so that we all agree, or, and, and if we don't, we can, we can ask for guidance from the department heads or whatever. Exactly. And I just thought it'd be easier. That way we could focus on the immediate needs for 22 and the other items that you uh, referred to we can we can set those off to later in the year. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we're limited with time, but we can set those off so you know there's room for discussion, time for discussion, but they don't need immediate reaction, right? Or immediate action. So, right. yeah, I, I think that's that's a good yeah. idea, Jeff. Because um, then also, depending on what financial situation we're in, then we can scoot things out to the next year and then you know reprioritize stuff too so i mean i like that plan that's a good idea right and we also have you know like we have the building committee with julie and that and they're going to be uh having another meeting here uh a, a week from this 
Saturday and be able to shine a little more light on direction with some of the buildings that we had requests for right. and we get a little better game plan. So there's no sense of our committee spinning our wheels at this moment right. on items like that till we get more feedback from like the building committee, I think will be very helpful. Okay, so uh, so at the top of the list is the celebration cake restoration and the display cabinet for the um, the uh, historic items from uh, for the three uh, fiftieth celebration, and that's for that's for this year. Right. So those are probably um, items that we need to discuss. Right. And the person who, who knows about that is Carolyn. Those requests is Carolyn, right? Right. Okay. Yeah. I'm, they're really just placeholders because number one, uh, the fundraising committee is probably going to raise money for them anyway. But I, I really didn't know how much money we would have to put in for the cake because we might have, have had to purchase it. I'm hoping it will get donated and, and it's just repair work. But if you had a purchase price, and then repair work, you know, you would, it would be offset by, um, you know, fundraising, but, you know, we're trying to get people to, you know, submit anything that's close to 10,000. So it's, it's a highly unlikely that it's, that number is going to hold, but I felt like I wanted to be hundred percent transparent that, you know, we might have a $5,000 purchase price and $5,000 into renovating the cake for Deerfield. I don't know. Um, but highly unlikely. So I, it's just there, Jack. Okay. okay. And then but those, are, those are two items that we can simply start and uh, discuss as we get more information. Correct. Right, right. Okay. Well, I mean, one of the things is that um, it, it's originally Westfield's cake and Hatfield has it now. And then Waitley was going to get it this year, and then there was going to be into storage before we used it. But Waitley is putting off their 250, and um, they don't have any fundraising group either. So, um, Carolyn, think, please don't tell me we have to cut the cake between Waitley and South Deerfield or Deerfield. No, 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 no. We're going to get the cake, but we just, we just don't, we don't, we won't have uh, repair for storage for a year. And I think it's going to be gifted to Waitley because they have no organization down there and Hatfield will feel sorry for them. So if, if Hatfield gives it to Waitley, maybe Waitley will give it to us. I don't know. So and okay. Then, then we can recon it and we can sell it to some other town that, you know, like Dalton or something, right? Maybe we can make some money off of it. Yeah. <laughs> well, whatever. I, I mean, that's the latest update on it. So I okay. wouldn't, I wouldn't worry about having to spend money on it yet. Okay, so then the next items are the, well, on, and maybe I've, I actually made a list. So I don't know if it follows exactly, I guess it follows the, I guess it follows the spreadsheet. So the yeah. next items are the uh, elementary school upgrades and which um, th this is an, these are ongoing projects to, um, redo the bathrooms and the entryway and flooring upgrades, and uh, they they've been they've been good about um, you know requesting a relatively small amount of ev money every year, but consistently so things are getting things are getting upgraded um, you know on a consistent basis. So and yeah. those are things that um, Ken Cutterback would could fill us in uh, with more details since he's the, the chair of the uh, school committee. Right. There, uh, the replacing, replacement of floor uh, we've been doing and also, like you say, the check, the restroom upgrades and that. Mm -hmm. And so those are two items that, again, we could start and we definitely want to address them for this year. Right. Right for this year, and but I, you know, I don't know. Those of us that have been on the committee for a while, it you know, it's kind of a 
it's kind of a standard thing that's been on the uh, the five year plan for a number of years. And uh, Correct. The, these upgrades definitely need to be done. So, and I think they're doing it in a logical uh, a logical way, uh, cons logical consistent way. So, right, I agree. Okay, so the the next thing is the request from the from uh, Frontier. Uh, it's for um, duct cleaning and replacing the stage curtain. And the Deerfield share, I don't I don't know what the total cost of this is, but in any case, Deerfield share is fifteen thousand two hundred forty one dollars. And my understanding that this is for this this request is for this year for sure. I have uh, some questions on that, Jeff Upton. Mm -hmm. Now, the the question <clears throat> the question would be that this is a capital request, and if I remember correctly, the four towns uh, approved uh, for Franklin uh, for excuse me Frontier Regional School District a separate. Uh, capital budget mm -hmm. that they have and there was like a 1.8 million mm -hmm. that was approved at annual town meeting by all the towns and so my question is why would they ask for $15,242 from Deerfield why would this be a capital request to Deerfield why would this not be a capital request out of that one point, I think it was 1.8 million that was approved because they have their own capital fund. Right, so why is this a separate capital request outside of that? Um, but according to their, the emails from between Darius and Casey, the 15,000 is uh, Deerfield share. Yeah, so that, if I could, that, that, that this is a four town warrant request to all four towns from Frontier. Okay. Yeah, but why is that even a request for our capital, uh, for the capital budget from the towns? They have their separate capital budget. They have $1.8 million that they, that was approved. They have their own capital fund, their own capital entity that, that all four towns approved at $1.8 million. This request should be coming, as far as I'm concerned, unless I'm missing something here, this request should not be here. It should be going directly to the committee, their uh, capital improvement committee for Frontier Regional School. It should be going directly to them. Now, I don't know if there's a little confusion here between parties as far as communications, but my take is, is that that dollar amount should not be coming to the four towns. That dollar amount should be going directly to their committee because they have an individual capital improvement committee for, for Frontier Regional School, and that request should be going to them, not not broken out to the four towns into our capital uh, budgets here. So if you look in your packet, um, there is a brief explanation, but it doesn't touch on the fact that you're telling me that there is a separate capital program through FRS. So right. I'm yeah. going to have to ask that question, Jeff, because that's a nuance that Shelly doesn't explain in her email when she sent us the warrant request. Right, right. I, I saw that. I saw I saw the uh, request and the warrant, and that's why I say I don't know if there's a lack of communication or just maybe a little misunderstanding uh, at that level. I'm I'm not sure, but I think that needs to be cleared up because I I really don't believe that this request for uh, Frontier Regional School should should be in our capital projects plan because they have established their own entity as far as a capital, uh, a capital uh, budget for Frontier Regional School exclusively. And that's where the uh, 
you know, the proposed track money is going to be coming from, from that fund. It's the same thing. All this, all this stuff for Frontier Regional School capital projects should be coming out of that fund that was approved at the annual town meetings. That's my understanding of it. Okay, so well, can, can we just investigate to, that and move on? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll, I'm yeah, going to okay. send an email to Shelley. Yeah, so we're okay. going to ask. We're going to so do that. Ask her what her justification is for it, and we'll see what we'll see what she says. Good, but I think that's a good point, Jeff. Yeah, you just might want to remind her that they do have their own uh, capital committee and their own capital budget for Frontier Regional School. Okay, so, so moving on to uh, request number six, uh, I have on my list the MVP grant match, which uh, the climate resiliency uh, uh, um, request slash grant, which uh, my notes from last week say it's a placeholder. So this is actually, we are in the midst of pulling together an MVP grant. And what we did was the select board and the grant writer, Chris Curtis, identified some priorities that they would like to pursue. And one of them is the largest chunk of that request. If you look through um, the attachment to the capital form shows the identifying separators between the different projects. And usually it's a compilation of smaller projects and larger projects. And the biggest one is about 300, I think it's about 384,000. So I'm just scrolling. Give me a second. Um, so, so I'm looking at the. I don't want to get too deep into this, but the basically the, the 384 is for the green parking lot construction on the Leary lot, and this the state's share is 96,000, and the town match is 384,000. And so I had a little clarification from Chris Curtis, our grant, um, our technical assistance person for this grant. And basically the reason that the state share would be so little is the state really isn't in the business of making parking lots. So the town would, would end up paying the lion's share of that parking lot. Um, the concern is, is do we really have the ability to do that, particularly since we've had some projects that were a bit challenging in the last year or so? Um, and are there other avenues we could get money, we could perhaps get a grant from another avenue that might work better? Um, so essentially, Chris Curtis asked me to get a definitive, as definitive an answer as I can um, about this particular thing because it plays directly into the letter of interest that we have to send out to MVP prior to drafting the grant, the final version of the grant application. Casey, quick question. Just sure. up in again. On the, on the 384,000, I understand. Uh, as far as the Leary lot, do we know exactly what we wanna do with that? In We're actually I mean. in a stage of trying to finish that development, the development of that plan. Okay. So, so the one... 300, the 300, Jeff, the 384 is for drainage and um, some drainage work and some asphalt work. And what right. the 96 does is add the pervious surface. But I'm hoping actually with uh, we would be able to get some economic development grant that we could tie in with the beer garden at Berkshire through and then get more, more money paid for it than the MVP program. Because it's clear there's so many communities now in the MVP program that we might have gotten it originally, but there's no way in heck they're paying for our whole parking lot anymore. Right. No, so I, I, and I understand it's not, what you're talking about. Are you going to put in stations for electric cars there? Yes, we already yes. have a grant for that. Okay, that's why I was wondering. 
Now, it, when you get closer to finalizing plans, and, and I realize this 384000 is probably just a rough figure, uh, could you possibly forward that to, like, uh, Warner Brothers or actually Allstate and have them do an estimate for you? Because I was just looking at the estimate of the uh, talking about the police and town hall uh, paving of the parking lot there. And obviously there's some work that needs to be done. And I don't remember the figure off the top of my head. And I don't know the square foot area uh, that you're talking about as far as comparison. I'd have to really take a look at that. But they're, they're supposedly quote or, or estimate from, I think it was Warner's or Allstate, one or the other, uh, basically same company. There's, there ran, I think it was like around 184,000 off the top of my head. I could be wrong, give or take. I think it's 140,000. Okay, 140, so it's around 140,000. So we may find that we what, that we don't really need this uh, 384,000. I was just wondering if we could find a little more definitive uh, figure on that. Well, the problem, Jeff, is it isn't just about paving. It's about doing drainage and several other items to bring the lot up to a more usable space. Right. No, I, and I do understand that. But even even with the police station, I mean, they're they're going to have to do or the town hall area, they're the parking area. They, they have to bring it down 18, at least 18 inches in that new fill for the drainage and then, uh, you know, uh, asphalt on top of that. So I'm sure it's going to be very similar to what you have to do with the Leary project. Uh, you might need a little more drainage with the Leary project, but I was just thinking if you're getting pretty close to a final plan, it might not hurt to get an uh, estimate from, from you know, uh, Allstate or yep. Warner Brothers. Okay. We will. I think that's a good idea. That way, that way we'll have a better idea as far as the exact figure and it might make it a little bit more easier for you as far as the uh, uh, grant efforts. Okay, so... I think the estimate came from the engineers, but yeah, I'll ask. Okay. Okay, so uh, so in any case, that's a that's some that's a placeholder. That's in that's something that's in in process for not for this year for a, a future year. Um, uh, number seven on the list is the purchase of Cumberland Farms, which uh, also is a placeholder. Yeah, we don't, no, we don't truly waters. know uh, the real cost, but it's not, uh, they, it's been two years unoccupied, so they've lost their um, uh, occupancy permit, for, you know, for it's a non-conforming lot. So it's not really worth very much, mm -hmm. and it's uh, pretty derelict. Of course, we would try to make sure, I mean, we wouldn't take it over unless we had a good clean 21E, but um, I'm, I'm hoping, again, it was just an idea, but it's such an ugly eyesore and it's pay, you know, just paves over the whole downtown, South Deerfield. We were, I was hoping to get some kind of pocket park money for that, you know, put a little pocket park and maybe sell some of the, some of the back to, um, um, you know, Wolfies for parking or something like that. Right. Well, I, I mean, comment. I think it's a good idea to 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 start to think about doing something about it. And you know, yeah, I mean, I mean it's, it's been sitting there for more than two years. It's right. ugly. even if it was just demolished and cleaned up, and it was grass, it would it would be a a, a tremendous improvement over you know what's there now. Yeah. Jump up. I, Quick comment. Yes, yes, Jeff. A couple of things that I'm very concerned about is one, you've got oil tanks in there uh, that, and gas tanks, I mean, varied. Uh, that could be very expensive. That could be a nightmare if we purchase that as a town and you could run into some serious money trying to clean that up. Uh, I, I would not go there. I would not go there as far as purchasing it. Number two, the pocket park sounds good. I know that's been mentioned now, but we're spending over $2 million on a park right down the road. 
you have a corner lot there in the center of town, I would prefer to see that go to a business. And, you know, a local business would be great. And I know we've been, you know, it's been a couple of years, and it is a little bit of an eyesore. There's no question about it. But I'd hate to see us rush into something and not really fully vet that to see what could be done and done cost, you know, with the cost effect uh, in mind. Uh, like I say, I would stay away from that w- with a 10-foot pole because something like that could run the town into a huge amount of money as far as the, the cleanup goes. Well, also, I'd hate to see that, uh, and I know we're trying to do downtown and do some things, but we really don't have a master plan, and I'd hate to take a corner lot in the center of town off the market where you could have you could have a, a you know some type of a very nice uh, local business there at a, at a reasonable dollar amount. So and yes, you may not be able to do it in six months or even a year, but you know we've sat on other property a lot longer than that. So just just my thoughts. Don't don't worry, well, Jeff. I, I, I had had mentioned that we would not do it unless we had a 21e a clean 21e. Right. So. Absolutely, we would not inherit it. Um, the other thing is, um, um, Bill Wolfram has been trying to reach out to them, and they have have you know since they've been bought out by the um, Brit, uh, UK company, they they have not responded. So the idea was to encourage, um, you know, this to move along, and see. I, I was going to say they yeah. they have there there are derelict gas stations all over New England. And outfits like Cumberland Farms basically abandon them and they sit on them because they know they're dirty and they know that it's gonna cost hundreds of thousands of dollars to clean them up. And they, so they just leave them there. And unless, yeah. I think unless there's some pushback, there's nobody that's gonna that's gonna buy that lot to build a, another building or do or do anything with it because if you buy it you take over the um, right the cost liability of, the, yeah. the the cost of, of cleaning it up so but I, so I think they you know they have to be you know we have to we have to push them in some way um, and and yeah, no, the idea Eric was just we're the, interested the, in buying it if you clean it up we might be interested we would be interested maybe you know but but it, yeah. but if we just well, if there, we there is there is some, be there 20 years from now right and there is some incentive or there is something that municipal you know from a municipal point of view that we could force them to do in a cleanup um, because they're not doing anything it's like abandoned property right. so we can force them right. to do it I think uh, there's it's very complicated, but um, I went to a, I saw this in a webinar, and so I, um, and then you know they turned pocket, they put pocket parks in, and, and it it was a really good idea, and I thought this was one way that you know we could get some action, I mean because Bill Wolfram has made offers, so you know it's not like there wasn't interest, so the whole idea is just to get something movement, get something going, yeah. right? So but if you didn't list it, I agree with that, yeah. If we didn't list it, you couldn't do start the process. So I'm just stirring the pot, basically, Jeff. Okay. Yep. Okay. So so in any case, for our purposes tonight, that's a placeholder that we're gonna. That'll right. Be on the please please don't think that this is something. Talk about it more. I you know I want the yes tomorrow. This is you know just something putting out there. Yep. Okay, so moving on to number eight, the um, municipal offices, police department parking lot. That's uh, uh, estimate is $140,000. And my understanding is that's a request for this year. Yes. Is that correct? Uh, Carolyn? Uh, yes. Yeah, I'm, I'm well, yeah. we're, we've got to take down the tree, a couple trees, and we've got to save another tree or two. And so um, it is part of, we would like to do it, um, or at least start, I, we need to save the ash right away. So we're going to inject the ash tree. And then the other two things we should try to do this year. 
Jack, yes. a quick question. Yes, Jack, could, I was just wondering, above, above the uh, town offices here, as far as the paving, we have a couple items that are uh, the town common design and improvements yeah. and town office file servers. Those are both sitting in 22. Are those just placeholders? Or are they just being removed? Well, it looks uh, like the, it looks like the file server is crossed out. the The thirty five thousand is crossed out. I'm waiting for more information on that because it may actually cost more than that. I'm I have a meeting with our IT specialist uh, next week. I was supposed to have it this week, but we had some with the vaccination uptick. I had to make some changes in my schedule. Okay, so so that's maybe a placeholder. It's yes, it's it's a placeholder. It's just maybe a bigger number. I'm. Sh um, I do have one thing. Um, the and I was just going to say it because I don't want to forget. But with regards to the MVP, that expression of interest letter is due next week. So. Um, that's the reason that I asked if there was what kind of appetite there would be because we actually, if we're going to go through with a grant process request, we have to send a letter first. And so we would indicate to them that we are in process of, of discussing this with capital. Did you, did you um, uh, reschedule that meeting for today for today for t to Friday or something? We're working on it right now, Carolyn. Okay. All right. It's my fault, you guys. Um, you know, it was just a disaster today. Uh, you know, doing the setup and then trying to, re you know, cancel, depending, we couldn't, finding out we didn't have vaccine and having to reschedule and all. So I really apologize that we don't have more information on that. Well, that's okay. We, we're just getting started here, so. A uh, quick question on the 55,000. For, for the, the, town, the town common design. Right, yes. It, I, we don't have a request for that at the moment, I believe. That's why I, I think that's why I didn't put it on the on my list. Okay, I was right. And I was just curious if 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 we are taking that off for 22 or are we expecting something to come down the line? Jeff, what was the what was the item? I'm sorry, I missed part of the, what uh, you said. The town common design and improvements. Last year um, we approved or we recommended forty thousand dollars. Don't know if it was done. Yeah, the year it's actually we... in process right now. We're working on it with a designer right now. So is um, there another town common thousand requests? Yes. For yes. <sighs> I, I don't believe we have a, a request for the fifty-five thousand dollars, though. It's a carry forward. It was there the last year. This is one of those legacy items I called them, Jeff. Well, the we amount did, didn't we did, change. We did forty thousand last year, and we did forty thousand the year before, if I remember correctly, which brought that account up to eighty thousand. I'm wondering if this is this fifty five thousand in addition to that eighty thousand? Yes, and it was on last year's budget for twenty two. Last year's capital budget for twenty two. This was identified. Okay. In the past, we've we've requested uh, paperwork on it on an annual basis. So a lot of things didn't have paperwork on an annual basis, Jeff. So this is what's confusing to me. If if some people don't have to provide paperwork, but others do, it makes it difficult for me to figure out what should be an item and what shouldn't. Because what I did was I took all the items that were legacy already existing in the next several fiscal years, and I left them where they were placed. But when I talked to the board, they do want to try to continue with the town common because not only does it play a part in the 350th, but it also plays a part in complete streets and connecting to the Leary lot and some of the other connections they've been discussing. So I hear what you're saying, but it's not clear to me that I was supposed to get you something when there's a lot of other things that didn't require 
refresher? Uh, every every year that I've been involved, we required refreshers because things change, and we we've asked for them to provide a request, a written request, with with an explanation, so we knew what the request was. And I understand you try to project out, uh, you know, like even with the with the schools and that. And we've asked, you know, like the Deerfield Elementary School. Even though we know it's an ongoing project, we have asked them to uh, put paperwork in every year just in case things change, whether it be a little increase in cost or, uh, you know, whether whatever the case may be, so we could, we could view it and just have it right. so we're able to assess it. That's all. I, I think it's just, I think it's a good idea to have the, you know, the, the paperwork again, just so that we we're clear. I mean, frankly, I'm very confused still by a lot of this, you know, and, and like a good example would be uh, last week, um, Kevin, Kevin's requesting a piece of machinery for this year for $108,000. I forget the name of it. And then he sort of on an off, he, uh, he made an offhand comment that he was, he was going to request the um, mini excavator again. It's actually on the list. It's on the list, but the, he didn't, we don't have any paperwork. So that, so but here's it, the problem. It just, it just got carried forward. And so here's the problem. There's several items on here that got carried forward that I have no background paperwork on for several years. The town roof, the file server, that, that building archiving system, there's no paperwork for that. Um, so there's no place for me to start to recreate paperwork for you. Well, we're second, not, Casey, no, we're not accusing, we're not accusing you, we're not accusing you of anything. No, no, but the problem is, is there's a whole book of requests from the, for equipment from the highway department that, you, that came in in a book, and I don't know if anybody still has that information. But everything was, was laid out over a period of, I think, 25 years, if I recall, because yeah, I was here Casey, when it was first developed. Casey, 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 I think we need to slow down here. Things change in that. The, it, our, our town bylaw requests a completed form for each, each request on an annual basis. If you take a look at the bylaw for, for the committee to uh, consider and act upon, if we don't have that form, that standardized form that we've created on an annual basis, we're not, we're not following our, our bylaw as far as the CIPC goes. We need- So Capital isn't being clear about what needs to come out of the office, Jeff. Because Pardon? if I looked at last year's memo and it does not say that, I use last year's memo as the request. So I, if I don't tell people what I don't know, I can't get you the information you need. Casey, well, well, look at the town bylaw. We, if, you, if you look back, we have not acted on any requests, and we've actually asked people to forward paperwork if they came in and wanted something that they had not done a written request on as far as completing the form. And that's why we have these requests. It says FY22 capital expenditure request form. Those need to be filled out for any purchase that needs to be done for FY22. And I understand that there's things as far as ongoing projects, but that paperwork needs to be filled out with a dollar amount and with a description so the, uh, so the capital improvement committee can actually see what the request is and figure out if there's any need to interview, ask questions, or if there's enough information provided so we can act on it. Now, if you take a look, again, I'll go back, and, I, and I'm not big on, on the bylaw myself. I think there's some flaws there, but it does request that, that all departments submit that paperwork by December 1st. And I think we need to do that so we can be consistent. So if Kevin wants a mini excavator, he needs to fill out a, a request for that, a capital improvement request. And I don't mean to be a stickler, but 
you know, I I don't want to be on a committee if we're not going to follow the bylaws. Well, and I, and, it, and it, this is a good this mini excavator is another good example because Kevin Kevin said kind of in an offhand way, I'm going to request it again, and then he said, and it's gonna it's probably going to be another four thousand dollars. So how? If, if I wasn't listening, I have I I for whatever reason was listening, and I remember the debates we had about this machine, and I, I was like, well, wait a minute, there's no there's no paperwork, there's no request form, so what's up with it? And, and this was going to be one of my questions as we go along here, but so to me, that's just that's just an example of why. We need an updated form every year. And, and so for the most part, you got them. But the situation is, is it's not clear. So here's the problem. The Capital Improvement Planning Committee was handling all of their paperwork, which meant I had no access to it. When I was told I was sending this out last November, this past November, I have no access to any information about how you want to see something. Bylaw notwithstanding, Jeff, I've read the bylaw. The question is functionally, if you have legacy items on there and the Capital Improvement Planning Committee isn't leaving, it doesn't have a paperwork place in the office to which I can refer, I can't be clear with people. So from now on, not only does the request have to be clear based on the capital formulation or expectation for the budget year that we're going into, but that memo should reflect the requirement in the bylaw. And I think that's what's gotten lost in translation. So what I'm concerned about is making sure that I'm covering my basis with the department heads and the committees. Um, but if it's not clear from the different, the different, um, people handling different things, then it's very difficult to be clear by now. Casey, like, let me by this up, spot. Casey, let me back up very quickly here, because I, I don't want you to be on the defensive, because in all, in all fairness, you kind of jumped in here uh, in, the, in the middle of the stream uh, without all the information. So I'm not blaming you. I'm not pointing fingers at you. Please don't take it that way. I'm just saying what we have done in the past. And in the past, there has been a form sent out every year, usually in around August, to the, all the department heads saying and requesting that they complete paperwork for all their capital requests I did for that. the past year and, and, and having it uh, in by December 1st. Now, I did that, Jeff. And, and we That's have, what I mean. And we, all right. And we have done that on a consistent basis and I realize yes. what you're saying, well, there's a legacy and you have a five-year plan well just because it's on the five-year plan four years down the road here that doesn't mean that that's not going to change and you have to I say that and I'll give you an example of why why it's important to have that paperwork last year when and I'm not picking on Kevin we're just using this as an example I'm sorry it came up if Kevin's listening, I'm not blaming Kevin at all. But last year, he had a request. And on the request of that mini excavator, there is actually two machines he was considering that he wanted the committee to uh, consider. And one of them was uh, a mini excavator. And I believe, I can't remember off the top of my head, it was for 60 some odd thousand or something like that. The other one was for like 109,000, the bigger one. Right. So now we're in a situation here where we get a, uh, a dollar figure, and I haven't got it off the top of my mind here. I can try to look it up quickly. Last year, it was there was one for sixty five nine in the last version of the report that I have. That's what right. was carried right. forward. Right. And the other one, the other one, because we had paperwork on both of them, was for one hundred nine thousand. So that's why we need the paperwork and we need the requests on an annual basis because things can change. 
And that's all I'm saying. That it's. A, it, I think it's very important that for each each uh, project that the committee has to consider for the coming year to build the to build the capital plan, the budget plan for the capital should be with paperwork and completed. So yeah. it eliminates the confusion. I hear you. I agree. Okay, so. I agree. So we we all I, we're all in agreement. So let's move on to let's move on to the next uh, the next item. Um, which is the municipal offices repairs repairs, which uh, yeah, so I think Trevor said that's a placeholder. The municipal office repairs takes the place of the town roof. And what we did was we utilized the study that was done by GRLA with estimated costs um, for all sorts of, of items in the municipal offices, not just the roof, because there's many maintenance items that haven't been kept up with and GRLA specifically identified them. So when I wrote the app, when I wrote the request on the form, I included as an attachment GRLA's spreadsheet of what they identified and what it related to. And then I also include a included a request to do a maintenance project on the stairs that access the assessor's office because that's a separate uh, ramp and staircase for ADA purposes um, that we are actually required to maintain. So what you see there is a combination of the town roof and identified items that the town really needs to start taking care of based on the assessment on the buildings. Okay, but the question is, is it a request for this year or is it something? Yes, it's a request for this year. Whether we can do it or not, I get. We really do need to do the steps though. Because again, that's an ADA requirement um, that is important to keep up with so that we don't have access issues for folks that might have challenges. Casey, I, I, yeah. agree, I agree with you on that, Jeff, again. I agree with you on that, uh, but I, I do hope that uh, before we make consider that and make a decision on that, I do hope that we at least as a group with the uh, building committee figure out uh, what we're going to attempt to do with the buildings as far as far as that report goes. And they are actually holding information sessions about that, Jeff. They held one on Saturday because I moderated the meeting. Right, I know I was involved with that meeting. Yeah. And what I'm saying, what I'm saying though, is if we if we determine that we're going to keep the town hall, then it's worthwhile uh, trying to make repairs that have been neglected for a long period of time. If all of a sudden you're going to tell me that now we need to tear the town hall down, then you'd want to take a look at what you need to do to make a patchwork to get you through a couple of years before you built a new town hall, if you understand what I'm saying. I do. And the other buildings would be the same way. But yes, there's several things there that need to be addressed and probably should be addressed immediately. And those back stairs and ramp area are one. I agree. And one thing that everybody should know is in the maintenance budget, the omnibus budget, there isn't money really dedicated to a lot of projects. It's very piecemeal. So that was one of the reasons that I sat down and I looked through the that evaluation GRLA did and I talked to Kevin and I developed a request. You can tell me no, it's okay but at least it's on your radar screen so that you understand that we're trying to address the maintenance issues for the period that we can expect to be there for at least five years, I would say, based on a building construction process we might have to go through. Um, even discussing it now, getting off the ground to building a new, a new building takes time. 
So I just want you all to be aware that GRLA did identify these things. We should start trying to address them because we could figure we could be there for the next two to five years. So just so it's there and go ahead, knock it down. It's okay with me. At least you have it. Okay, so moving on to item number 10, the building inspector software, which is a yes. request for this year for 15,500. It is, we're trying, I'm trying to find a grant for that, but it really, it became an issue with COVID because of connectivity problems. When the town hall closed, it became much more difficult for us to keep that essential service moving. And that was an identified essential service from the beginning of COVID. Um, having this type of a system would allow an intersect between staff and officials and builders and other types of uh, other disciplines to connect remotely and be able to apply for permits very quickly and find out the status of their permits in a much more efficient manner. They could go to our website connector and see that. So it could provide a lot more access. Like I said, I'm looking for a grant for it right now, but it's, it, it's in play, let's put it that way. And then this is also gonna add in an additional 6,000 per year after it's implemented, correct? Correct, and that would be in contracted services. And when would they expect to bring this online? Um, it looks like by the time this gets approved and put in place, we're probably gonna be out of the woods slightly with COVID, right? That's the case, but that doesn't change the fact that this is the type of, COVID was, was precipitous so in, so in coming to us. Yeah. Um, but it's something that most towns are moving to because it creates some efficiencies in the office, especially in processing. Oh, perfect. So it, it would still be valuable even post COVID. Yes, oh, definitely. Yeah. Okay. okay, good. This is one of those things that the pandemic accelerated. So just yeah. exposed an, an underlying issue that we already had. Well, exactly. we knew Mark. about it. We knew about it because it's not just the purchasing of the software. You have to take all our back records and archive them. And, and I think this them. says that it's not going to cover the archiving. Right. It's not. Right. It's just for the transition. The archiving was a separate request. And so to Jeff's point, I didn't have that previous request or I would have cribbed it to give you an updated one. Just, but that archiving is, an, is a long-term ongoing thing that we should start to implement because our records, we're getting more and more requests and records access, the recommendation from the Secretary of State for records access is to push it all out electronically if you possibly can. Well, so. the reason you have to understand if it's archived, it's saved. And then also when someone does request it, what happens is it's, it's, it's pulled out and it's done really quickly versus staff time going and digging it out and then sending it out physically. And so it's a huge, once, once you've done it and you can keep it up, it is extremely, extremely from an operational point of view, very efficient. It's just, you know, we have all our years of records to do and, um, so is it's that, a huge expense. We've been thinking about this for quite a while. It's just, you know, we've is been that 35,000 something yeah. that we want to consider for the archiving for this year? It's, my notes well, say we want to make sure you want to make sure it goes with your software, Jeff. So you wouldn't that's you wouldn't want to archive unless you're going to buy commit to buying the software. I mean, it's right. Well, that's package. that's what I was going to ask. My my next question was the the software as far as the permitting software and obviously future updates, are they going to be able to be interactive with what the town hall and the town offices are using for software in their updates? So we would be getting a new software package, Jeff, and it would, the one that's actually the best price is Patriot Properties, which I ironically is also our assessing software. So there could be a connect there that would, we would have a bridge for. That's the hope anyway. There isn't a guarantee because honestly, I haven't actually seen them do something like show me what it looks like. I haven't seen that yet. This is this was developed with the assistance. The inspections department found the information for me and I'm providing it to you. With regards to the archiving though, um, 
Patriot doesn't have an archiving system per se. We have a different archiving group that we use for town clerk records, for instance. So the connect may be the holding of the files, not necessarily the processing of permits with old records because the archiving is, once you start to create permit records in a certain format, they, they can live in that format electronically. The archiving is really going back and scanning all of these old documents and putting them into files that are searchable and quickly accessible. So it may not need to connect is, is kind of where I'm driving to, the inspection right. software and right. the archiving. Right, as far as the archiving, but with the other, through the permitting press, uh, process, it would be nice if all that software did connect within within the town hall. So if the assessors had to uh, assess it or access it, then they'd be able to also. So it would be nice just to make sure that the software was interactive, that's all. Okay. I'll check. I think I think it's connect connectable. Um, okay. to the assessors because it's the same company, but how the connection happens, I don't know. So I would have to ask that question, but it's, okay. it's a point well taken and it's one that we've thought about, which is why I was interested to see that this was the lowest quote. Okay. Thank you. Okay. okay. So the bottom line is the electronic archiving is a placeholder. I think so. I don't have the old documentation to regurgitate for you, Jack. Um, I don't, I literally, I would have cribbed it and given it to you if you had, a lot of these things, I don't have anything to crib from. So I, okay. it I, existed, I, I asked and they said they would like it, but I think they would, from an inspections department perspective, I think they would like to implement the permitting software and get that off the ground because of the deficiencies that were identified when COVID hit. Um, the archiving does need to happen, but honestly, if it were between the two of them, I think they would choose the inspections permitting more. Quickly. Okay, so that's that's fine. Um, so the next thing is um, redoing the town's website. Which so is that number is a placeholder, <laughs> which is I won't swear on TV. Um, I have names for the website because I struggle with the website myself, and we've had a lot of complaints about the website. Effectively, the website is inefficient. Um, if I was to boil it down to one word. So what I did was I reached out to our website platform host and I said, okay, I know you have a different product. What is it going to cost to transition the, to that different product, which is a more efficient one, one that I have used. Um, and no, it's efficient. And they gave me a, a price. The majority of what you see in that $48,000 is to transition records already existing. The platform itself would need some planning. So we, there's also a $5,000 amount built into that for the organization and planning of a new plat to fit into the new platform. However, I've been on one call and I have another call at the end of the week to go back and not only see a demo of the new platform, but also talk prices with them. Because if we can do some background work with a web tech consultant that I know of, if we could do that, it might save us money in the transition of documents because if we could do it ourselves, it's going to be a little less expensive ultimately. Um, so the money is a placeholder. The request is not because we really need to do something about the website. It's, as I said before, the Secretary of State's office suggests that we push things out through the website, which means the website effectively becomes an electronic document holder. It's a storage area. Um, but the request isn't for this year isn't for this year. It is for this year, yes. So they, this board. actually came to me last year from the select board. It sounds like there's a lot of work, there's a lot of work ahead of actually implementing something like this. I've got somebody actually checking into the interior of our website now to see if there's things that we could do that might not mean a complete conversion. On the other hand, um, the website is, is very dysfunctional in that it's not organized. And so that's, that's the, the, biggest be, the biggest problem for us is how much time it takes to put things on the website, show people where they are and make it and have it be user-friendly so people can search for their own, for the information. 
um, this conversion price tag includes doing some of those changes. Um, but it's something that if we don't get a handle on now, it's just going to continue to cost us more time and money to try to fix the inefficiencies that already exist. Casey, quick question. Is this, sure. is this something that maybe uh, the UMass uh, IT uh, department could look at? They could look at it, but the platform itself, we would ha we have to make decisions about how we're going to they can't develop a new website for us, I don't think. They don't do that for free. They can look at the structure of it and maybe make suggestions. Well, that's what I was wondering. If, if, you know, if, if there's some questions that we're not sure about, just another set of eyes. I, you know, I, I'm not sure. It's just a question I thought I'd throw out there. I talked to a friend of mine to see if he could do this because he did it in Ashfield. He, he and one other person really organized that site. And so he understands the platform. And that was important because when you're digging for information, that might be, it's useful to have somebody that understands how they should, how things should connect. So is that what you're asking me to have talk to UMass about? Yeah, I was just wondering. It just, it was just an idea, you know, just another set of eyes where they, you know, their department might have some suggestions to try and make things a little bit easier. Do you have a contact for them? Because I don't. I don't, unfortunately. Not not in that department. So. Okay. But if you if, if you I can find a contact, I can reach out. But I don't. I need a contact so I know right. who to talk to. Right. right. Yeah. No. If you have somebody that you've dealt with before and, and you feel comfortable, that's fine. I actually. Okay. I, I might have a contact for you. Although. I, I feel like they're, whenever I've inquired about this in the past, they, they've they just said, well, we're so busy doing cutting edge work. We, <laughs> we're not really interested in working on some lousy town's website. Town website, yeah. <laughs> Okay. He, you're not the first person that said that, Jack. <laughs> um, okay, so, so we're going to, we're going to consider that for this year. So now moving along to uh, number 13, the HVAC problems in the police department. And yeah. I know that this is an ongoing problem. And was this, was this considered in the GRLA assessment or is the police department? Yes, they did, they did refer to it, I believe. Yeah, they did. And it really is a public health issue, not just because of COVID cleaning up the air, but it's got mold and mildew and it's so really good. It's also the parts aren't replaceable in the current system. It's such an old system that you can't find parts for it. So eventually we have to replace something. So my, my uh, notes say this, that this is a placeholder because it's unknown exactly what the fix is and that um, from uh, John Pachurik's um, uh, description of, of the problems, it, uh, you know, a, a, a sort of a patchwork fix would be to install mini splits, but that might not really be the ultimate fix. And he, he's, I believe he stated that he maybe needed engineering help to do a, a, a complete um, central HVAC system. That's correct. I, I believe you did say that we're waiting on engineering for what the long-term fix would be. So, th so that's, that's why this would be a placeholder maybe for, um, well, I don't know. A actually, I, I, actually, I, I wanted to ask the question, was the 50,000 for that engineering work or, or was it for actual hardware in some future year. So maybe that's a question we can we could ask him. Okay, so it's actually in his expenditure request form. In the first paragraph, he says repair and or replace the current HVAC system or otherwise install mini split HVAC units um, as recommended by the TBAC committee report. And then he says, 
yes, there is a there is a need for some engineering, and I think it's probably because of the building and the systems requirements. It's not an easy fix for him because of the station itself. Um, but he does say that in the first paragraph. And, and if you want more information, we should schedule him to talk to you. Right. And the mini splits should the mini splits for some reason didn't 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 work in the jail in the cells or in the jail cell or something. But yes, but and so there's requirements that he has for that. Okay, so we so we're gonna have to schedule him to just to talk to us okay. to talk and clarify. The mini, the mini splits the mini splits are more or less of a band aid. Right. Uh, yes. As far as providing some cooler air uh, in back, but it doesn't address the real problem. The real problem is the moisture within the building, and that's that's when you get back to your uh, HVAC system as far as being able to address that. So I think it is, uh, or it would be good to uh, bring the chief in and discuss that with him. Okay. Okay, so we've come to the end of the first page of my notes. Do we want to keep, I know Carolyn wanted to get going in like an hour and we, we're now at an hour and a half. Yeah, I, I really oh. hate to say it, but I got to make a couple hours of phone calls at least. So um, I, I don't know, I think we should probably call it a night. And- uh, Who do you want me to call for the next meeting is the question besides John. Um, You know, you know what would be quick would be the skims. We could get the skims, um, get Zach in, because do you Zach need to have Zach in? Because Zach's is pretty easy. Zach's is to me. Zach's is so. Uh, All right. I mean, I'm and, and I'm fine without paid. having. Yeah, I mean, in effect, he's paying for it himself. So. Yeah, yeah. I know it's it's uh, from the rent money, but it, the exhaust system is you know is actually OSHA required now anyway. I mean, I th I'm surprised they don't have an exhaust system and they, they should have it. So, I, well, you know that the building was a gift, so. Yeah, I know. If, if Actually, the OSHA requirements went into effect right as they were finishing that building. So that could have had something to do with it. If Ken is going to be at the next meeting, maybe Ken could address the elementary school request. That should be fairly quick and clean. Right. And we could I send Shelly an email too. So I'll I'll, uh, I'll 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 try to get Ken to make sure he comes to the next meeting so he can cuz he'll be the uh... And then then in that meeting we can sort out what we want to ask Kevin and then schedule Kevin for the next meeting. Right. right. Well, on our next meeting we could uh, do the back page of the capital projects plan request. Right. Go through like we did the front of the page, yeah, and then we could do Zach and Ken. Yep. Right. Well, do we really need Zach though? Yeah, that's I guess what I'm asking because you've got questions about other things. Zach's is pretty straightforward, and it's in the capital request itself. Like I mean, it's very clear in the capital. Maybe we should get uh, uh, John. Maybe we should request John come to come next week. It'll be succinct, Jeff. <laughs> you wanna... Yeah, no, I, I agree. I don't, I, you know, the, the SCEMS is pretty straightforward, I think. Yeah. Because well, and... we have to, we, we need to do both, really. And, and right. it's coming out of rent money. Right. And yes, right. it uses up a lot of the rent money, but then I don't foresee that there's any big purchases right. for a few years. So we'll build up again. Right. My only my only question for Zach on the on the on the paving was will that be enough room as far as vehicles away from the helo pad as far as any downwash if if that should have to take place? Uh, that's a good as question. I'm not really I I can't remember. Um, I saw the layout, but uh, I think it's pretty. It might be pretty close to that, Jeff. Well, my, we'd, have my to, only, we'd have to verify that. If if you have if you have employees vehicles parked there and you have a helicopter come in, and unfortunately, yeah. if you have any debris flying uh, in, you know, windshields or paint.
paint jobs or whatever. I, I'm just wondering if if that's going to be enough room. That's all. Yeah. So you want to know if there's enough room between the the paved, the newer newer paved area that he's requesting and the helo pad? Yeah, yeah. just to make sure that there's no major debris flying and and doing any damage to cars or vehicles. Uh, yeah. That'd be my only thing. If they're not worried about it, then I'm I'm would be fine with it. I'm I'm just sorry, Jeff. I can't remember. Yeah, that's okay. It's something that you can check on. Yeah. Okay. So um, next meeting is is Wednesday at five thirty. Does that does that work for the members that are here? Um, twenty fourth. Uh, we actually don't have a selectman's meeting that night, but we have a infrastructure meeting uh, that we're going to go to. Um, I think it will have to be Jeff. I mean, uh, Jack and Jeff. It will have to be um, five o'clock if we're going to do it on selectman nights. Okay. Um, but it can be five thirty or six on non-selectman nights in general. So are we saying, are you saying that next week, five, it would have to be five o'clock to accommodate your other meeting? Yeah, because we're, we're going, uh, the select board normally would have a selectman's meeting, but we are going to do it Thursday instead so that we can go to the, um, um, water and sewer infrastructure webinar with, uh, Joe Cumberford and Natalie Blay. It's it, potentially we can get, you know, it's about grant money. So it seemed like a good thing. We went a couple of years ago and it gave us a little, gave us how to use the USDA grant program. So. Carolyn, what, what time would you have to leave for that meeting? That's at six, but we don't have to go anywhere because it's on Zoom this year. Yeah. So we could do it, we could have a meeting. I mean, I don't have to be there for the whole meeting. We could do, you know, have five o'clock meeting and then I'll just leave it at six. Or we could do 4.30, we could try for 4.30. Yeah. We were just stuck this this week because we had already scheduled the executive uh, session. All right, so I think 4.30 is gonna be too early for me. Too early? Okay. Okay. All right, so we're back to five. Mark, does five work for you? Um, for this particular one, yes, but um, you know, I, I think if we could have a later start for the others, that would be best. Okay. Well, I think what we did, what we try to do in general is um, uh, try, you know, try to do it every week for a little while until we get through it, and and we wouldn't have to worry about the selectmen's meeting for another two weeks, so we could make it later. So okay. on the 24th, five o'clock? Yep. And then in the future, we'll try to uh, make it later yes. for, for, uh, for all of us and, and make it a little bit easier for Mark? Yes. What's about the earliest you can start? 5.30? 5.30 safe, yeah. Okay. So 5.36 would work for you going forward? Absolutely, yep. Okay. That's fine with me too. All right, so let's do five o'clock. Does that make sense for the 24th? Right. So we'll, I'll try to gather the uh, the other members. And um, do we hear, oh, go ahead, Casey. Jack, I'm just gonna send an email to Jennifer to ask her to schedule that first thing tomorrow so that we get you into the Zoom um, schedule. Okay. Since we only have two accounts. The, yeah, I'll send her the agenda. Okay. Okay, so do do I hear a motion to adjourn? I'll make that motion, Carolyn. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye, Jack Davy. Aye, Carolyn Ness. Aye, Jeff Upton. Aye, Mark Brennan. Okay, Thank so you. we're adjourned at uh, seven o three p.m. <laughs>